Welcome everybody to Ningbo International Speed Park. Welcome to the penultimate round of the Blancpain GT Series Asia Championships on the line this weekend. We've got two races, one today, one tomorrow, and that will determine the outcome of what has been another season-long duel between the best teams, cars and drivers in GT racing, not just the Asian squads, but also Europeans that continue to come across here because it is one of the go-to championships. And so, with a race today... One hour coming up very shortly and a race tomorrow. It is in the main GT3 overall contest. Martin Kodrich and Dennis Lind with a 12-point advantage over Patrick Niederhauser. And then a mathematical possible champion, but very much an outsider, Nick Foster. In the GT4 competition, Reinhold Renger is 11 points there ahead of Takeyoshi Kinoshita and Sonako Yukushu. Five wins to Renger, four to Kinoshita and Yokosho with the BMW. So it is going to be an enthralling race. I very much doubt championships will be decided today. It's going to tear us up nicely for tomorrow's race. We've got this Saturday afternoon race due to start at 20 past three local time. Tomorrow's race is late morning, five to 11. It will blast into life. David Addison trackside, Claire Jedrak down on the grid and in the pit lane. And as the drivers now complete the installation lap round to the grid. So this 27 strong lineup starts to take place. The championship uh, as last year ends in China, last year in Zhejiang, this year uh, in Ningbo, uh, a new venue for not just the championship, but the teams and the drivers as well. Truly a level playing field, this, and it's going to be a real test on this four-kilometre circuit. Lots of corners, limited overtaking opportunities, but we're set to go racing. Now, what about the weather conditions? It was bright and sunny earlier. Who better than to tell us what it's like, because she's standing out in it, than Claire Jedrak. Hi, hello, and I'm down here on the circuit, the Ningbo International uh, Speed Park. And I tell you what, the weather is looking a little bit shifty. The clouds have come through. The temp has dropped significantly since the qualifying. But, you know, the drivers are already out there, and I've talked to quite a number of the drivers, and they said it's quite a technical circuit. They're actually really pumped up to be here. But you know what? I think we're going to have a couple of moments where we talk to the drivers, and I'll let you know what they're feeling Back to you, David. Thanks, Claire. So, grid form, temperatures dropping. Could we get a chance of rain? I tell you, looking out from the commentary box window, it is getting greyer and gloomier overhead. And uh, it would certainly spice things up after the pit window had closed, wouldn't it? I know that's being a bit sinister. Uh, if it started to rain, and was a real test of the teams and the drivers from then on. So, we're almost good to go racing. We'll have a look at the grid in due course. First, though, let's just remind ourselves what happened last time out in Shanghai. Away from the start, a good getaway was made by Frankie Chang on the outside of the front row. Better than the pole man, Dennis Lind, who braked a little bit late going into the first corner. Tapped the Audi in the tail, turned it around. For that, Dennis Lind got a drive-through penalty, but it came late after a safety car period. Daryl O'Young had been the real winner on the first corner, out from 10th on the grid to 2nd, but he then lost out as John O'Lester got through in the Ferrari, and we lost Jordan Pepper, the Bentley, facing the wrong way, coming out of Turn 3. That was the reason that we needed the safety car. Everybody bunched up, and it took away Dennis Lynn's healthy advantage. The battles raged on. Eduardo Liberati was a man on a big, big mission, trying to get up the inside of Daryl O'Young. He did it, had to use the kerb, but he was coming through. Pit window opened. Everybody served the regulation pit stop. And when the cars went back out, there was drama for Alex Jung because he's bent, he hesitated, and then had to do a sort of control alt delete reset before he could get going again. But Nick Foster by this stage was just away and gone, building the lead as the battles raged on behind in GT4 with GT3 traffic getting through as well. Aidan Reed got into the back of Florian Strauss, trying to prize open the door, Nissan keeping Porsche at bay. Eventually, Aidan Reed did make his move, but he had to use the grass to do it. Onto the last lap of the race, though, Nick Foster had a commanding advantage. And the winner of this ninth round of Blockpan GT Series Asia by 13 and a half seconds. A first win for Nick Foster and John O'Lester. A first win for Hub Auto Corsa. First win of the year for Ferrari. And Nick Foster and John O'Lester, the winners here in Shanghai. A 
fabulous race and it began like yesterday with a bang contact off the line audi's getting sandwiched it's a nice wide circuit but even this isn't wide enough for a full field of 32 gt cars it would seem four wide at the front of the pack into turn one chris vanderdrift running out wide he was done for a false start Alessio Piccariello got a puncture and limped into the pit lane in retirement and there was damage too for the Mitch Gilbert Aditya Patel Audi. Piccariello limped to the pit lane. Another one in strife was the Mercedes of Alex Dow. Bodywork fouling a tyre. That car pitted, lost ground and fell in the end to seventh in GT4. On the road, there was this great battle going on between Marciello and Tapelli. Trouble also for the number five Bentley that had a long stop, went back into the race as part of its test exercise. But up front, it was still Marciello ahead of Mapelli as they fought their way through the traffic. Alexander Matchell then caught by Hiroshi Hamaguchi, in turn caught by Dennis Lind. The three got themselves together, late race. And Dennis Lind was able to pounce as he went through turns one and two to get second, and then he got the lead briefly out of turn 13. Bat marker getting in the way just ever so slightly. It all changed at the end of the straight though. Lind dropped back into third briefly and into the lead briefly with Hamaguchi. Then it was Matchell back ahead, and then the car swapped ends. Around he went, he slithered off the road, just a bit too much speed carried through the 7-8 sequence. Off the road he spun, and so that put Dennis Lynn into the lead, a lead he was not to lose, a second win of the year, and a lead in the championship to Dennis Lind and Martin Kodrich. So drama in Shanghai, drama set to come here at Ningbo. First time the championship has been here. As ever, it was a lively qualifying session and his first pole, Nico Bastien. Uh, a really good effort, though, for Ruloff Bryans because he has put the Indigo Racing Mercedes fourth on the grid and is certainly going to be a man to watch in the course of his first stint and Ruloff Bryans on the grid with Claire. Hi there, car number 97, Roloff Bruins are there, and he is with Indigo Racing. Tell us, P4, it's been a while since you've been up the top here. Yeah, we had a very good uh, weekend so far. I mean, uh, today in qualifying, made a bit of a mistake, but still P4, I'm uh, very happy with that. And tell you what, you've had a couple of uh, co-drivers right now. Um, does that really shake things up when it comes to stability of uh, changing the drivers and with the uh, driving style? Well, we, ha we had a lineup uh, till this part of the season. Uh, we, we made a little bit of a stop for, for the last race for some performance. And going now into Silver Silver class really paid off. So uh, I think we made a good choice about that. Thank you. Rudolf Browns then, who came from the GT4 class of China GT, but was a pretty quick single-seater racer when he lived in Europe. And he has a new co-driver for this weekend, Manuel Metzka. Now, this is the Ningbo circuit. All 22 corners and kinks and hairpins of it. It's just over four kilometres long. Uh, there are limited places in which you can overtake. And as we saw in qualifying, the chicane, midway through sector two, is one where they are really using a lot of kerbs. It's a spectacular circuit. How it's going to fare for racing, we'll have to wait and see. It's not the widest we've been to and it's certainly uh, tough for the drivers to find a way through traffic and when we got through the pit stop window and the cars are all out of sequence it is going to be fascinating to see uh, exactly who is good on their toes at getting through the order and through the field and through those back markers it's a one hour race pit window as ever between the 25 and 35 minute mark if you're in gt3 you stop for half a minute uh, a minute and a half 90 seconds if you're in gt4 it's 125 seconds but then you've got extra pit stop time to factor in as well. If you were first in the previous race, as the Dennis Lynn Martin Codrich Lamborghini was, you'd get an extra 15 seconds. If you were second, like the sister car of Marco Mapelli and uh, Hiroshi Hamaguchi were, uh, then you get 10 seconds. And if you were third, like 888 Mercedes, Alexander Matchell, Raffaele Marchiello after the spin, then they get five seconds. Same principle in GT4 uh, for the top three finishers. Championship battle between, really, the two cars at the front of the grid. Number 999, Nico Bastian, will start. He is not in the hunt for the championship because he's missed the occasional uh, Block Pan Asia race to be racing in Europe. But co-driver Patrick Niederhauser very definitely is in the mix. And he is chasing the car alongside. And that is the uh, Dennis Lind and Martin Kodrich Aston, uh, Lamborghini. And uh, that's the one, of course, that has the advantage in the championship. Let's go back to Claire on the grid. OK, triple nine here for the group at M. Tell us you are at the top of the grid here for the GD3 pole. Thoughts going through your head? Uh, concentration, nothing special, to be honest. Um, no, but uh, the pole position is very important here in Ningbu. Uh, nobody raced here before, but I think it's very difficult to overtake. 
So the start is going to be the key for, for a good race for us. And uh, for sure, a good um, position today is very, very helpful for Patrick's championship. I'm just the guy who wants to give him the car in, in the lead. And then he has to do the rest for sure. But uh, I want to do my job like, as good as possible. Brilliant, thank you. So Nico Bastian then starting from pole position on the inside of the circuit because this is an anti-clockwise circuit. There aren't many of them, but this is one. And so pole position on the inside line going down towards the first corner. That's the chicane with the high curbing that people have been using to their advantage. It does take the stress through the car, though. It's going to be interesting to see whether they can all survive for an hour doing that. It will be a rolling start as ever. So very shortly, engines will fire up. We've got a car missing do we from the grid yes the number six bentley that stopped in q2 with what was understood to be a steering issue that is missing from the grid quick look down to see that everybody else is present and correct yes i think everybody else is there but the number six bentley unless it's going to start late from the pit lane is not going to be in the race and that's a big big shame it's one of the problems i suspect for the teams of a, a busy saturday if you have a problem everything's crammed in there's practice there's qualifying and a race and if you have a problem uh, in the qualifying session then it's going to be uh, difficult to get to the grid in time so the phoenix team that operates the bentleys will be toiling away but i fear we're not going to see the silver and green bentley only the champion the federal mogul backed car uh, which will be started by andre kuto having his first outing for the phoenix squad right the grid is being cleared as you can see race director very shortly will give the signal for the pace car as it is to accelerate away that will have a little bit of an advantage and then the race cars play catch up to go to proper pace to get the temperature through the tires and the brakes ready for the opening lap of the race all the corners are by number turn one is more of a kink into a sharper turn two which goes into turn three another right hander it's almost one long corner effectively but it's uh, numbered individually and then they will thread their way around the lap. 86 to be started, as you see down on the grid there by Aditya Patel in the running for the championship this time last year, but it's been an awful, by their standards, 2018 for him and Mitch Gilbert. WRT running the car this year. And even though WRT has this great track record in European GT racing with Audis, it has just not gelled at all here. So the grid almost cleared. One engineer stands with the remaining cars and at the one minute board will fire up the engine, make his way off the grid and then the circuit will be clear for round 11 of Bronc Pan GT Series Asia. We've had another extraordinary season of racing and add to the fact that this is not a championship yet two years old. It's come a long way in a very short space of time, part of the uh, global expansion of GT3 and GT4 racing orchestrated by SRO Motorsports, Stefan Rattel's organisation and Benjamin Franasevici, the championship manager, has done another sterling job all season, finding teams, finding cars, finding drivers and Ravin, the race director, radio in hand, is the man that's going to be in charge from here on in for the next hour and a bit of racing and his first task is to get the field underway. Number six Bentley is definitely withdrawn from today fingers crossed it will be on the grid for tomorrow's race one minute to go then the sign is shown engines fire up and the grid is about to be cleared and then we'll be good to go racing place your bets the two cars at the front have a championship to think about as well as a race to think about but one of them will have to serve a longer time in the pit lane so rather there explains what he's going to do with the safety car the pace car let that go first and then everybody else will catch that on the rolling start the formation lap the block pan gt series asia championship decider here at the ningbo international speed park is just seconds from getting underway we'll have a look through the grid we'll have a look at the circuit at the same time 15 seconds to go and there the pace car as it is accelerates away now and when that has got a relevant amount of distance between it and the grid then the field will be released any second now green lights go on to get the formation lap underway 999 the mercedes on pole position of nico bastian then leads the pack clear dennis lind lining up alongside him on the second row eduardo liberati in the nissan and then the mercedes of Rudolf browns on the third row it is anthony lou in his audi as you see nico bastian and dennis lind then share the front row of the grid Second row will be Eduardo Liberati starting in the Nissan and uh, Rudolf Browns alongside in the Indigo Racing Mercedes, the Korean team. On the third row, you've got Anthony Liu with his absolute racing Audi and the sister car started by Frankie Cheng 
race winner this year alongside on the fourth row John O'Lester in number 27 Ferrari and the best of the Porsches is number 911 started by Sandy Stubig on the fifth row Andre Couto's Bentley that he shares with ex-born pre-driver Alex Young and it's going to be Darrell Young to line up alongside in the second of the Kraft Bamboo Racing Porsches ahead of Aditi Patel's Audi and the similar car from Absolute Racing of Andrew Kim Next on the grid is going to be Alexander Matschul sharing with Rafael in Marchiello, a car certainly to watch, especially in the second stint. Hiroaki Nagai to line up alongside in the Ferrari. Then it will be Hiroshi Hamaguchi, but missing alongside Sean Tong, the Bentley and on starter. We will, though, have uh, Yuki Taniguchi and Morris Chen on the penultimate GT3 row, and behind them is Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter with the AMAC Motorsport Lamborghini. Uh, then the next row is where we get the GT4 grid. Uh, Sonata Yukosho lining up alongside uh, Ruichiro Otsuka, winners both this season. Second GT4 row, Justin McMillan, who drives on his own, lining up alongside the redoubtable Ringo Chong. On the third row, there's the BMW of Ken Arata, and alongside is the Porsche of Tony Fong. Similar Porsche next of Keo Chang on the back row of the grid. And Blancpain GT Series Asia's first all-girl crew. Naomi Zhang starts. Dina Rosario shares in the Mercedes AMG GT4, which comes under the auspices of AMG Driving Academy Team LSH Motorsport. We are about to go racing. There is Nico Bastian then for Gripper M Racing, the man on pole position. Down they come, then you see pit in on the left-hand side of the road. This brings you all the way down through turn 21. There's a tiny kink at turn 22 onto the pit straight. Round 11 of Blancpain GT Series Asia from the Ningbo International Speed Park set to get underway. The lights on red, go green. Good start is made from the second row of the grid by Eduardo Liberati, but it's a better start by Dennis Lind, who dives across the front and takes the advantage into turn one. Lind leads, and Nico Bastian's off the road. There's contact, I fear, and Bastian is off. He's in the ground, but he's in the barrier. Can he get going again? Delayed look is the Morris Chen Ferrari, and round goes the leader. Liberati gets collected. That looked like Sandy Stuvik's Porsche that was in the mess. Chaos at turn one and turn two, but Dennis Lind has survived it. Up into second place is Nick Foster. Up into fourth, I think, is Aditya Patel. And there, look, trying to dig, dig, dig out of the gravel. No, Nico Bastiani's beached. The car is stuck. It was moving, but it's dug itself in. And Nico Bastian is off the road and out of the race. Dennis Lind leads the way in second place, then. It is the number 27 Ferrari, which has been started by John O'Lester. That out of the race is 9-11, then. So we've lost Sandy Stubik. Sadly, he got entangled with there look the very broken Nissan of Eduardo Liberati which did lead and then we saw facing the wrong way now was he tapped into the spin or did he lose it on cold tires we'll try and piece it together in due course safety car deployed not surprising with cars littering the circuit and debris all around as well so the safety car heads onto the circuit the race is neutralized even before the end of the first lap well that drama right from the start but the significant element in all of that is Nico Bastian in the gravel that's bad news for Patrick Niederhauser. It's very good news for this combination of Dennis Lind and Martin Kodrick. So Dennis the Menace will lead the way down towards the completion of lap one where the safety car will scoop him up. The race director is on his way back from the gantry to race controllers there. Walking away from a broken Audi is Anthony Liu, who had qualified really well, fifth fastest, but Anthony Liu walks away. So often the incidents come in the mid-pack. It's actually been amongst the leaders where it's all happened. And so the safety car is deployed, and there it will pick them up, look, on this second lap of the race. All of these laps behind the safety car do count within the hour. And at the end of the opening lap, we can identify others that have fallen down the order. One of them is 97, Roloff Browns. He's a long way back, and that car has tumbled, tumbled, tumbled down the field. Right, let's try and have a look, if we can, at exactly who did what to which and to whom. Nico Bastian was a little bit slow away, seemingly. Dennis Lynn gets the drop. Now, the Nissan comes storming through, and ah, uh, right, there was contact with Browns against the Nissan. But what about Nico Bastian? He just seemed to be going deep into the corner on the wrong line, and he came across the front, got tangled up with Rulof Browns. There he is being speared off the road. But he was on an odd line anyway. There's contact at the back, and then there is more contact as around goes the Nissan. So Eduardo Liberati tagged into a spin and he gets collected and there's damage 
significant damage to a number of cars. So the safety car deployed. There is another innocent victim of it all. That's Sandy Stuvik walking away. So Nico Bastian out. Eduardo Liberati out. Anthony Liu out. Sandy Stuvik out. Four GT3 cars out on that one. We lost the Bentley before the start. So now is your golden time, is it not, to make up some points? The championship permutations. This is why the safety car has been deployed, just so we can do the maths without losing racing laps, I think. Uh, but I know it's all dependent on Dennis Lind and Martin Codridge. But now, with Bastian and Niederhauser not scoring, because they're in the gravel, certainly throws the pendulum their way, and it leaves Niederhauser with a lot of work to do tomorrow. The gap, 12 points coming into this race. But it could be an insurmountable one by the end, couldn't it? So by not scoring at all, Dennis Lind and Martin Codridge could be champions come the end of the next 56 minutes. We'll see where they come in the order. But now that you've lost another three GT3 cars in addition to the Mercedes plus the Bentley, then let's see. The other one to factor in is 27 because John O'Lester and Nick Foster are still in the mix. It is in second place currently, 27 Ferrari, John O'Lester. But that will gain on the pit stops because, of course, Dennis Lind has this extra penalty of 15 seconds. So if things stayed as they were, there would be 27 points between the Lamborghini squad of Lyndon Codrich and Niederhauser, which means that he would not be able to win tomorrow because you get 25 for a win. So now 888 Mercedes, the sister car, becomes very important to try and get up there and take points away from number 19 Lamborghini. There is 888. It is Alexander Matchell at the wheel of it at the moment. And to do the second stint, the ever quick Raffaele Marchiello. Losing places now, but it will gain 15 seconds worth of time back. Now, of course, going against Dennis Lind here is the fact that the longer the safety car period, the less racing laps he has in to be able to extend the margin over the rest of the field. So that goes against the Lamborghini. We know that Dennis Lind is quick. He's proved that as Lamborghini Super Trofeo Europe champion, as winner of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo World Final and as a double winner in Block Pan GT Series Asia this year. So there's the Lamborghini leading the way. We're on lap three here of round 11 of Block Pan GT Series Asia. We are behind the safety car, and the reason is partly to do with the start. Nico Bastian did seem to be ahead when he got to the line. Maybe he lifted, which is what caused the cavalry charge behind him. Dennis Lynn gets the power on and comes across. Now look, Rulof Browns and Eduardo Liberati touch. But the Mercedes still can't work out from that angle whether there was contact. If there was, it may have come from the Nissan on the inside. And that's what speared Nico Bastian across the road. But it's hard to gauge from that angle. And then so many other cars either take evasive action or run into each other. And there is 37 Audi getting into Eduardo Liberati. Sandy Stuvik in 9-11 is the completely innocent victim in all of that. But lots of damage for the Nissan. And so... By the exit of turn three, we are four cars down. And one car, of course, never even started. Safety car stays out. Coming over the timing line. Race order then. Dennis Lynn leads. John O'Lester second. And for those of us of a certain age, you see Lester in a Ferrari. You think Hector Lester for many years in British GT and uh, occasional GT3 Europe. But it's John O'Lester, the Kiwi. Third, it is Frankie Cheng, who has made good progress up from sixth on the grid. Fourth is Aditya Patel from 11th, an amazing first lap, keeping out of trouble. Fifth is Andrew Kim. Sixth is Darrell O'Young. Seventh, uh, it is the Ferrari, number eight of Hiraki Nagai. In eighth place is Andre Kuto, having his first outing in the champion Bentley. In ninth place, now 63 Lamborghini. This is the Pro-Am car of Hiroshi Hamaguchi. And in tenth place, Maurice Chen, who's also... Uh, made pretty decent progress, has he not? Because Chen was 18th on the grid. Uh, then in 11th place, it is the surviving Nissan of Taniguchi. 12th is Alexander Matchell. 13th is Andrew McPherson. And 14th, you just saw it a moment ago, 81 BMW of Yukosho that leads GT4 up into 15th, despite losing out on the opening lap, Rudolf Browns. In 16th place is the Mercedes, started by Raichiro Otsuka. 17th is the KTM of soloist Justin McMillan. In 18th place is Ringo Chong. 19th is Ken Arata. In 20th place, it is number 11, Porsche. That's Tony Fong. Uh, 21st is number 17 of Keo Chang, his Cayman. And 22nd is the Naomi Zhang Mercedes. And there, 
some very frustrated drivers. Eduardo Durati explaining about the contact that got uh, his race ruined. And Nico Bastien, pole position, saying after qualifying, you can't really overtake very easily, so very important to be at the front of the grid. But it all seemed to go wrong off the start, as though, because he came out of the last corner ahead of Dennis Lind, as though he realised that he shouldn't have been, and slowed, and that backed him into the pack. Dennis Lind got the advantage, and then Nico Bastien perhaps did get touched by the Nissan of uh, Liberati, and that started all the mayhem. So we've still got cars to move, and I fear we're going to be another lap or two behind the safety car. So we've lost almost now 10 minutes under this safety car period. Down they come. And the race leader, Dennis Lind, he's in the right place, and he will know that the main opposition is in the gravel. Now, how low can they finish? They've got to win today, haven't they, in order to win the championship? Because even by being in second place, you get 18 points. You could just about do it on that. And then third would be out of the equation. So, with the pit stop penalty to be applied, the success penalty, calculations would suggest, I think, that only a win will do. So the field now turns through. And there is 88, the all-female crew. Naomi Zhang starts. Diana Rosario, the second driver in that car, who we saw in Shanghai. coming down towards the completion of lap number five. Dennis Lynn still leads the way. Just trying to work out what the Mercedes now needs to do, in, sorry, the Lamborghini needs to do to win the championship. So, Nico Bastian out with the team. Very, very frustrated indeed. As long as that Lamborghini finishes in the top three of this race, I reckon we've done it. Ferrari dependent. Certainly over the Mercedes, it will have. Race starts under investigation. Perhaps not a great surprise. Nico Bastian can hopefully piece together for us all of the dramas. Was he pushed or did he fall? Let's find out with Claire. All right, Nico, look, looks like a little bit of a demolition derby down there. What happens going into T1? It started already uh, with the start. Uh, you know, before the start, we are always in meeting with the race director. And the rule is clear that I'm in charge of the speed. And I'm also on pole position, so I have to be ahead of the second car. Uh, he was next to me on the same level or even a little bit ahead. So that's for me already what we call in GT racing a jump start. Um, and then he was ahead of me. So, But up to that point it was okay because I thought okay that for sure uh, he will get a penalty. But then I was braking for the first corner, normal, because you have to pay attention at the first corner because you don't win races in the first corner. And then I got like a mega hit. So there, have to be, there, there, there has to be one guy, he really totally misjudged the braking point and uh, shoot me off. So uh, it's a real disaster for the team, for Patrick, who's fighting for the championship, and I don't really understand why people drive like this uh, when they know that there's gonna be like a championship fight between two cars, and then they go like all in for the first corner in the first race of the weekend. I don't get this, but you know, let's see what the race like this is. Okay, thank you very much, Nico. So, an understandably frustrated Nico Bastia. I think it is the Nissan that, that did the contact from the inside because we saw that strange line of the Mercedes coming across the front of Roloff Brands, which had already clipped them with the Nissan. So, 
although Nico Bastian is saying that uh, he was given this mega hit, it may have started out of the Nissan driver's control, Eduardo Liberati having already been given a bit of a whack by the uh, Roloff Brown's Indigo Racing Mercedes, so maybe he had no option but to brake late because he'd already been unsettled. So right now, we have a car being investigated, which is Alexander Matschul's Mercedes for overtaking during the safety car procedure. Uh, we've also got the calculator out and reckon that if 19 stays in the top three, there's no way for Patrick Niederhauser to win the championship. But against number 27 Ferrari, let's wait and see. It may not win the championship in this race, number 19, but what we could do is lose Patrick Niederhauser from the maths, from the, from the fight. But Nick Foster might just stay in. There is Alexander Matschall, that's the car that is being investigated for possibly overtaking during the safety car period that we have. And we're not that far away now from the pit window opening, only another 10 minutes. So these drivers really have lost a huge amount of pure racing time. And you can understand why SRO was quite keen to limit the number of cars for this last race, given that it's uh, quite a tight and twisty circuit. 27 of them we have, 26 have started and 22 completed the first lap. That's the run towards turns seven and eight, which again is really one long corner, but uh, numbered as two kinks through the right. Then there's a short straight down to the turn nine hairpin here. And then a slightly longer straight up the other side into a very sharp left-hand at, at turn 10. Then there's the chicane. So the field swarms through. There is 666 Reinhold Renger or his car, driven at the moment by Otsuka. He, remember, is looking to try to win GT4, is Reinhold Renger, but that's going to go down to tomorrow, I think. So, the start is being looked at, safety car procedures are being looked at, the circuit's being cleared. The officials are far busier than the drivers right now, who are all still holding formation. 888 then, AME Zhang through. That's the... AMG Driving Academy Team LSH Motorsport car, Naomi Zhang, who's raced in uh, China GT and the Chinese Sirocco Cup and uh, the Audi R8 Cup in China, but now coming into Rockman GT Series Asia for the first time, learning about the circuit, learning about the car, getting quicker and quicker all the time. Eighty-one BMW there is leading in GT4, 14th overall. So a good effort this thus far by Sonako Yukosho. Comes through with Rilof Bynes up behind him. Safety car is about to bring them over the line to complete lap number seven. So I'm assuming it's the Nissan that still needs retrieval because that was a rather broken car in the middle of uh, the exit of turn three, approach to turn four. But part of the problem is you've got so many cars off and a limited number of recovery vehicles, you've got to move one before you can get to the next. But it must vanish. So there, the Audi in the background just being swept out of the way. So we're nearly, I think, good to go. When the lights go out on top of the safety car, you'll know that it's the lap the safety car will be peeling in at the end of, and then we'll get back to full race pace. John O'Lester on his toes to have a go at Dennis Lind. Frankie Cheng sharing with Martin Rump. They've had a win this year already, but they could be dark horses here. And what about Aditya Patel? Having said that it's not been a good season, could they round out the year with a surprise win? Dennis Lynn's on his toes. Look, almost pushing the safety car there uh, up out of uh, turn nine, wanting to get on with the job. Safety car can't go much quicker. There's number seven, Audi, running in fifth place. Andrew Kim, that's the car that he shares with Adley Fong that went well in Shanghai, so that's another one to watch. And uh, we are told the safety car is going to be in this time. So next shot, yep, it'll be in the pits at the end of this lap. It tells us that on the timing screen now to confirm. So we'll be good to go racing this time. And the next shot, the safety car lights should be out. There is 991 Porsche, which is Darrell O. Young running in sixth place. So Dennis Lynn leads the field through the chicane. And now the drivers have to get themselves back ready for the run to the first corner. Dennis Lind is on his toes, look, weaving around, getting the warmth back into the tyres, getting the pressures up as they come now through the top hairpin. This is turn uh, 15, drop down the hill. Through that next little S sequence. 
corner after corner after corner here. It's a busy lap for the drivers. And so you've seen what can happen when you get them all bunched up. Safety cars can breed safety cars. You know, we, let's see whether we can survive, certainly for another few laps, because we've not had a full racing lap yet, and we've had seven completed laps within the hour. This is the end of lap eight. This is the resumption of racing. Round 11 of Blancpain GT Series Asia from Ningbo International Speed Park is go and Dennis Lynn floors the throttle coming out of the final corner over the line he has the advantage by three tenths of a second in third place it's Frankie Cheng then in fourth it's Aditya Patel the Audi's having a go at the Ferrari they turn now through turns one and two Patel on the inside line he's under attack from Andrew Kim who runs very wide indeed on the outside line there in sixth place is Darrell O'Young in the best indeed the surviving GT3 Porsche really now wanting to get on with the job but Dennis Lind is away pulling clear remember he's going to lose an extra 15 seconds in the pit stops that could well given now how tightly bunched they are with six minutes before the window opens that could really cost them dear we'll have to wait and see what happens in the second part of the race when Martin Kodrich is behind the wheel but for now then it is number 19 Dennis Lind leading the way second is John O'Lester in third place Frankie Cheng there fourth is Aditya Patel fifth now is Darrell O'Young he's got past Andrew Kim next in the queue is Hiragi Nagai Andre Kuta gets up the inside of him, look the red and black Bentley alongside the Ferrari, they're going to be side by side, the Bentley towering over the Ferrari but he can't find a way by. Andre Kuto, the Macanese driver, Macau Grand Prix winner, goes for the inside line, that's a good effort and he's gone through, exiting turn 10, brilliant stuff. Prized open the door and Andre Kuto goes through, new to the car, but driving like a GT veteran for Bentley, isn't he? Swooping his way now up towards the run towards turn 15 so Andre Couto's next target number seven of Andrew Kim that's the race leader Dennis Lind coming down now towards turn 16 looking very strong indeed up front through they turn Darrell O'Young under attack he's got himself up past Andrew Kim this for fifth and sixth places but Andrew Kim in the Audi trying to come back at him as they work their way up towards the completion now of lap number nine. The leader goes by, Dennis Lind. Battle pack here, though. Darrell O'Young, Porsche, just ahead of Andrew Kim, Audi. That's for fifth and sixth with Andre Kuto's Bentley seventh closing up as well. Lind leads Leicester. Cheng, Patel, O'Young and Kim, the top six. What progress from Alexander Maxwell in the meantime. He's still in 12th place. And Darrell O'Young now is on a mission. It's been a lean season for Porsche, but the Kraft Bamboo Racing Team wants to end the year on a high note, understandably. Darrell O'Young accelerates through there, looking into the background, number 63 goes into view. That is Hamaguchi leading the Pro-Am Championship. Now there, Alexander Matschul in Triple Eight is on the back of Taniguchi in the surviving Nissan. So, Yuki Taniguchi, the video game developer, race winner this year under attack from Matchell and then you've got Roloff Brines getting back into the mix as well so Browns wants to try and find a way past 97 Mercedes right on the back goes for the inside line Matchell gets past Tony Gucci so does Browns and very wide goes Matchell Roloff Browns two places gained excellent stuff Tani Gucci back up the inside of Alexander Matchell he's going to have a go at the Indigo Racing Mercedes as well the Nissan to the inside can't quite do it into turn 10 but it was a bold effort that now Tony Gucci goes wide Matchell back to the inside as they head to the chicane flick through the left and then the right great racing going on here but at the bottom end of the GT3 pack that means the leaders are escaping all the while Dennis Lind has done the fastest lap of the race in the meantime downhill they come now through the hairpin at 15 so Dennis Lind leading the way only by 1.4 seconds Frankie Chang here versus Aditya Patel 38 minutes of the race to go as up over the timing line now comes number 19 Dennis Lind the gap is building all the time second it is still John O'Lester the gap now two seconds in third place is Frankie Cheng but where would a 15 second pit penalty drop Dennis Lind to potentially it's going to put him into about 12th 13th place it's going to be a long long drop big slide by Andre Couto in the Bentley catches it going out of turn one Andre Couto really hustling on that Bentley struggle in Shanghai but inevitably with Phoenix Racing They've done a lot of work, a lot of development, and it's moved on another level for this next race. There is 63, Hiroshi Hamaguchi right onto the back of Nagai now in the Ferrari. That battle, therefore, is eighth and ninth places, and there Alexander Matschul comes up to have a go at Yuki Taniguchi, but he can't find a way by. GT4, by the way, still being led by the BMW of Yukosho. That, in turn, means that GT4 is going to go down to tomorrow's last race. Race leader then currently on lap number 11, two seconds being the margin. 
nose to tail. The top two in GT4 here. Yukusho just ahead of Otsuka. Otsuka representing the chances of Reinhold Renger, who will do the second stint in that car. Very wide goes the BMW. Yukushu almost cracking under the pressure there. Behind the look, third in the class is Justin McMillan in the little KTM solo driver. So he gets an extra 10 seconds in the pit lane by way of penalty for that. Renga on the back now, sorry, not Renga, Otsuka on the back now of Yukusho looking for the class lead. Sonako Yukusho has the advantage, but only just the BMW Team Studi M4. It's been a real asset, this two car team to the championship GT4, ultra competitive all season, and now with a title on the line, this is great to watch. Otsuka all up the curb in the Mercedes here, coming up through turns 13 and 14. Can he find a way by? Not getting into the hairpin, he can't. Ruichuru Otsuka right onto the back then now of 81. Sonako Yukosho has the advantage, but they're being caught all the time by the little KTM behind them. There is the race leader, Dennis Lind, heading now through turn six. Back onto the power over the brow and into seven and then eight. Short straight down to the hairpin. The advantage he's got is 3.2 seconds. Dennis Lynn leads in GT3, he leads outright as well. GT4 still running together as they come over the timing line, incidentally. But Dennis Lynn versus John O'Lester, the margin is increasing. But what's going on for third? It's Frankie Cheng, still there. Very wide behind him is the Indian driver Aditya Patel. And then in fifth spot, Darryl o Young. So for Hub Auto Corsa, there is John O'Lester, the New Zealander, pressing on, but he's not being able to stay for the moment with the Lamborghini. He's going to have to get the time back on the pit stops. So the only car in the leading group affected by pit stop penalties is the outright leader. The others are quite a long way down the order. Frankie Cheng, or Chen Kong Fu, comes then in what is third place here, up through turn 15 and put Martin Rump in that car, it's going to be quick, so I think it's going to be a Ferrari versus Audi fight to the end, but we'll see where this car blends back in. The pit window is about to open, it is open now, and there, number 19, Dennis Lind completes another lap. He and Martin Kodrich have worked well together this season. Over the timing line they go. Now there, look, it's Andre Couto, and he's gained another place at the expense of Darrell o Young, and that puts him fifth into the pit lane early, on, uh, is Andrew Kim to give way now to Adderley Fong. That's a good move, that, to give the quicker driver maximum time in the car. Remember, that's a pro-am entry, so get your am out, put your pro in. Lots of pit stops, Rilof Brown's in to give way to Manuel Metzger, Hiroshi Hamaguchi in to give way to Marco Mapelli. So it's going to be Lind, Lester, Cheng, Patel, and Andre Couto in fifth place now. The pit lane clacks and he's going overtime in the background as car after car pours down the pit road also Morris Chen is in to morph into Tim Slade that is Hamaguchi out and Marco Mapelli in so for the FFF racing team that was a car that got damage in Q1 at the very end of the session but that car will go back out in a moment with Marco Mapelli at the wheel Mapelli in also of course Alexander Matschul putting Raffaele Marciello in the car early, so wherever possible, the AMs bail early and put the pros in to maximise the available track time they have got. There is number 19, Dennis Lind. He and Martin Codrich, very evenly matched. Each will tell you that each is the quicker, but Dennis Lind stays out for the moment, trying to build this advantage. Before you get to that pit stop, it's going to cost them an extra 15 seconds. Here's the GT4 lead battle, and it's BMW just ahead of Mercedes. The two Japanese drivers, Yokosho versus Otsuka, nose to tail. Takeuchi Kimoshita will take over the BMW, Reinhold Renger will take over the Mercedes. But Sarako Yokosho hangs on to the place for the moment. And what he wants is for the other BMW to get up behind him and take points away from the Mercedes. John O'Lester is into the pits, also Frankie Cheng is into the pits. Dennis Lin stays out for another lap. GT4, nose to tail here. Up through turn 10. Use the curve on the outside and then set the car up for the chicane. Drivers actually, understandably, given that it's the race now, they've got a longer stint to do, keeping away from the curb rather more than they were doing in the qualifying session. Back into the race goes number 51. Andrew McPherson has given way now to Ben Porter. There's Andre Couto up behind Raffaele Marciello. That car's got a lap down off the pit stops. 991. Also being delayed in the traffic is Darrell o Young, but he's trying to gain a place here off Nick Foster, the Hong Kong Canadian, right on the back of the Australian. The Ferrari has pitted. And Nick Foster staying ahead. 
up towards as they come. So there, 991 for Porsche. Hangs on for the moment. There is Martin Rump set to go, number three. Serves the 95 seconds and then will accelerate away. In the background, into the pits has come Otsuka to give way to Renga. We've also got Tony Fong in, in number 11. Away goes the Audi then of now. Martin Rump at the wheel, number 19. Lamborghini through still, Dennis Lind. Another lap will be completed by him, stays out. This is all good until he hits the traffic. I think maybe that'll be the limiter in all of this. He will keep going, doing qualifying laps as best he can until he gets up to the back markers, leaving the pit lane. At that point, it becomes irrelevant to stay out because he'll be slower in the traffic and he might as well bail. He goes really wide at turns two and three, as also there as Adam Lee Fong. Aditya Patel has just pitted out of second place. So you've now got Dennis Lind ahead of Andre Couto. Darrell O'Young is in as well. There, number 27, Ferrari. Nick Foster at the wheel. Darrell O'Young, a lap ago, was being delayed by the Naga Ito, number eight, ARN Racing Ferrari. Apologies. So there now is Nick Foster on track. One of the two Hub Auto Corsa cars. And there is Raffaele Marchiello ahead of Alexander Imperatore. That's just been a place change, in fact, for 16th spot. So Marchiello will gain a lap back when the leader pits, but he's still got a huge amount of work to do. This year's uh, Block Pan GT Series Sprint Cup champion. Towards as he comes in the background, Tim Slade in the yellow Ferrari running very, very wide all over the dirt. And Marco Mappelli is ahead of him and uh, determined to get past him is Tim Slade. There is Dennis Lind coming through the hairpin at turn 15. The advantage he's got now over Andre Couto is nearly 18 seconds. But gaps will become irrelevant once we get the pit window completed. How much longer is Dennis Lind going to stay out for? He's still not caught up to the traffic, has he? So he might squeeze one more lap out of this. Let's see. Down he comes. Yep, another lap he will do. Over the line he goes. Battle on here, Marco Mapelli versus Tim Slade. European GT racer versus Australian supercar racer. And they're fighting at the moment for 18th and 19th in the classification. So Dennis Lind leads the way. Andre Couto was second and has just pitted. Who will go third is the next question. And therefore, who will inherit second place at the end of the next lap? We're still waiting. with a 90-second pit stop and a flying lap of basically 102 seconds. A pit stop loses you the best part of the lap. Ringo Chong and Alex Au's car is in. That's for Ringo Chong to give way to Alex Au now. The team I race dot win Mercedes. Ringo Chong, as ever, doing a really good job in the first in. Alex Au, XGT3 racer, will take the car over. His former co-driver, Alex Jung, is taking over that Bentley. Andre Couto has brought it in. And so... Is the car going to hang on to a place within the top three come the end of the race? It's going to be the fascination. It's a much more competitive car uh, than it was last time out in Shanghai. 666 there has now got Reinhold Renger at the wheel of it. And he's about to be lapped by Dennis Lind. Down he comes through the hairpin out of turn 15. This could be the lap on which Dennis Lind pits because he can see the back markers ahead of him knowing he'll get slower when he gets stuck behind them. Down the hill he comes, wriggles his way out of turns 18, 19, 20. Pit in. Leader is in this time at the end of lap 16. Oh, finds a very slow BMW breaking earlier, and that costs him time. Look, he's almost pushing him down the pit lane. Dennis Lynn wants to get on with this pit stop. The BMW eventually gets out of the way, terrified out of the way, really. 82 down the pit road then. That was Ken Arata, and he will give way to Max Chen. That's the more gentlemanly of the two BMW M4s. Right, so out get Dennis Lind, in will get Martin Kodrich. The tall Dane gives way, and the driver change continues. Now, who will this bring back into contention is the next question. 
is it going to bring 27 Ferrari into the mix? There it is, number 27 Ferrari. Now remember, it was losing time earlier, but it's about to head towards the completion of the lap. Remember, Codrich has to sit there for 15 seconds, so this should take over the race lead now. Dennis Lynn's car, 16 laps in the book. There is Andre Couto, who is chasing 27 Ferrari. He's got himself ahead of Mitch Gilbert. So the Bentley, I'd say um, Andre Couto, is now Alex Young. That car also now well placed. Alex Young comes down the hill. So 27 Ferrari goes through now into the lead of the race. And the next question is going to be where in all of this will the 19 Lamborghini rejoin? There it is. Accelerates away. And Martin Kodrich will be where? He'll be just ahead of the Bentley. So it's going to be Foster in the lead, and Kodrich second, and Alex Young third, Mitch Gilbert fourth. The Ferrari should have gone through, remember, ahead of them. So Martin Kodrich has the advantage. Here comes Alex Young up alongside. He's already into his stint. Mitch Gilbert likewise. So Kodrich has got to get his elbows out here and try and hang on to the place. Round the outside goes Alex Young. Has he done it? He has. And the Audis are trading places behind, look, because you've got them absolutely together. Trying to get in on the app there, look, number seven is Adley Fong. Three wide, they go. Kodrich gets elbowed out wide. He's going to lose another place to Manuel Metzger here. Number 97, Mercedes, has arrived on the scene out of nowhere, given that it had a pretty pox first lap. And so Martin Kodrich left the pit lane second. He's been well and truly mugged even before turn nine here because he's gone tumbling back down the pack. So Foster will lead. Second is Jung, third now is Gilbert, fourth is Adelie Fong, fifth is Manuel Metzger, and down to sixth is going to be Martin Kodrich. That provisionally is the order. Lots of shuffles have gone on, and Dennis Lind, after a very good first stint, frustrated no doubt with the extra 15 seconds, but now we'll get his thoughts on the race thus far. Dennis Lind in the pit lane, he's with Claire. Okay, Dennis Lind here from the FFF Racing Team Car 19. Now, Dennis, you've had a great um, break there from the start. I talked to Nico a little bit earlier, and he said perhaps there was a jump start, but no infringement has been put out. Thoughts on that? Well, um, as we came to the line, I think we were pretty much side by side. He had a bit of an overlap. I think he got a really bad start because the Nissan was pretty much side by side with him coming into turn one. So um, I haven't seen it, obviously, but. It looked pretty clear for me. I could see him through the front window, so he was definitely in front of me when we started. Well, enough about Nico. Let's talk about your part of the race then. Well, it was um, the safety car was very long, uh, so we had a bit of an issue keeping the tyres hot, obviously. So, so I was weaving quite a lot, but uh, yeah, it seemed like I pulled a pretty good gap on the first few laps of the Ferrari, and uh, yeah, we'll, I hope we can benefit from that a bit later in the race. Thank you, guys. We've done 17 laps, and this is the leading car. It is Nick Foster's Ferrari. Now, second is Martin Rump's Audi. That was the one that sneaked through unnoticed as there Nick Foster rattles over the curb. Out drop his fillings. And Martin Rump is in second spot, 8.4 seconds back. Now, last time he lapped fractionally slower, so the Ferrari at the moment is the quicker car. Third now is Mitch Gilbert, just as we were going to hear from Dennis Lind. You saw the Audi go through ahead of Alex Young in the Bentley down to fourth. Fifth is Adley Fong. Sixth is Manuel Metzger, so 7th is Martin Kodrich, 8th is Aidan Reid, ninth is Raffaele Marchiello back on the lead lap, 10th is Alexander Imperatore. Question is whether anything can now stop the flying Ferrari for a second victory of the season to put uh, back into the championship hunt here, very definitely Nick Foster. There is Martin Kodrich having a go at Alex Jung and he goes through, so that's an important move because it gives the Lamborghini a place, but it also suggests that the Bentley has dropped back even more, he's fallen behind Adelie Fong now. So Alex Jung dropping down the order, and after all the good work of Andre Couto earlier on, that car just falling away a little bit. Whether it's got a problem, we'll have to find out post-race. There, almost disappearing out of the stadium completely, is Martin Rupp. He's pressing on, you can't argue with that, but he's losing touch against the leader. He lost another four tenths last time. A huge amount of energy is being put into the Audi, but he's running off the road regularly now. This is the absolute racing car that he took over from Frankie Chen, coming up now through turn six. So Nick Foster leads the way. Fastest lap of the race has been done by Dennis Lind, incidentally. And Nick Foster leads by eight seconds. Now, what's going on in GT4? 
normal service is resumed. Reinhold Renger leads the way here. There he goes in 666. Comes over the timing line and the rather more standard looking GT4. Less horsepower, more standard parts on the car. Uh, that is uh, leading the class. Number five, Alex Young, is under more pressure because now it's Aidan Reed right up behind him. And about to have a go, I suspect, is the Craft Bamboo Racing Porsche. Something weird going on with that, Ben. He's losing place after place. And now, right onto the tail of Alex Young comes Aidan Reed, the young Australian, dives up the inside. Is there going to be contact? Not quite. Although the Bentley gets all crossed up over the curb. Good save by Alex Young. To the outside line now goes Aidan Reed. But the Porsche denied the chance to get through there. Alex Young sticks out his elbows and he's going to have to do that because look who's coming up behind them. It is Rafael Marchiello who's about to leap into contention, charging along in the Mercedes. Deep into the hairpin, door is left wide open. Alex Young gives away a place there involuntarily to Aidan Reed, and Marchiello is going to be up with him by the end of the lap here. Downhill they come. Alex Young then dropping down the order. Does the Bentley have a problem? There's the race leader. No dramas whatsoever for Nick Foster looking for a second victory of the season here. He's up front and clear. Martin Rump dropping away. 9.4 seconds back, the Estonian. Now Alexander Matshaw has given way to Rafaeli Marchiello, and Marchiello in ninth place is about to become eighth because the Mercedes looking for a way past the number five Bentley going into turn one. There is Martin Rump still pressing on, but still losing time relative to the race leader. The gap has widened to 9.4 seconds. Now, we've still got 20 minutes of the race to go. Anything could yet happen, especially with the back markers. So, for the moment, number three, Audi, presses on. The team manager of the number five, Phoenix Bentley, has to report to race control now. So, is that a pit infringement, just to add to the woes as well? So, as we've got the cars on lap 20, 9.4 seconds separates the top two. And again, Alex Young, demonstrating those dramas, loses another two places. Past him has gone Mapelli, past him has gone Slade. And so, now, falling back yet further is the number five, Bentley. Makes me think there's a pit stop due for that car, because clearly all is not well. There, look, is Mitch Gilbert. Now, he's under attack from Malwell Metzger. Bear in mind, 97 lost a whole heap of ground at the start. It's been a really good recovery by Rulof Brands and also here by Metzger. First time we've seen Metzger in the championship, and he's doing a great job. Crawling all over the back of Mitch Gilbert here. This is a genuine fight for third place, and it's great to see the Indigo Racing Mercedes. has had a pretty troubled season. Rulof Brands, we've always known, has been decent, but now Manuel Metzger being able to really prove how good that car is. Now, as it stands, Nick Foster would be three points behind the Codrich Lind Lamborghini going into tomorrow, as there, way off the road and back on again goes Metzger. Patrick Niederhauser would be 20 points behind going into tomorrow's race. That meaning, of course, that the situation has changed with the places lost by number 19 after the pit stops, but it's buying them back. So all that could yet change before the end. What it does mean, though, is that potentially it's going to be decided tomorrow, not today, unlike how it looked in the early part of the race. There is 27 Ferrari. Mick Foster still leads. The lead gap is going up and up. 9.7 seconds now. Hub Auto, Corsa and China go well, don't they? Winner in Shanghai, potentially winner in the equivalent race at Ningbo. So out of 13 and 14, up the inside of number 82 BMW. That's the Max Chen car. Through goes Nick Foster. Nick, who came out of single-seater at Open Wheeler Racing through Formula Ford and into Australian Formula 3, was Carrera Cup Australia champion and raced then in the German Carrera Cup for a time. Drove for Porsche in the World Endurance Championship in the ELNS last season, but now very much a Ferrari driver. Coming up towards the completion of the lap over the timing line again, and that's now 21 laps in the book. Here's the fight going on behind. This is third, fourth, and fifth now because you've got Adley Fong on the back of Manuel Metzger, who in turn is on the back of Mitch Gilbert, who in turn is on the back of Dino Rosario to put a lap on the Mercedes and get up the inside there of the Brian Lee Porsche. Uncompromising in the traffic is Gilbert, but he gets it wrong coming out of the last corner too deep and up the inside goes Metzger. He goes through, he goes third. Manuel Metzger here is on target to give Indigo Racing its best finish in the championship through turn one. Remember, it was here at the start, the car was badly delayed, but Metzger goes wide at turn two, so does Adley Fong. 
the Mercedes up into third place now. What can he do from there? The lap times, now that he's got a clear road, will be fascinating to see whether he can go after Martin Rubb. Fourth place, Mitch Gill, but then falling into the clutches of Adley Fong. Sixth is Martin Codrich, who's a further three seconds back. And Martin Codrich's last lap was a 44.9, so he's not really gaining on these just at the moment. Manuel Metzger then turns his way out of turn nine along that back straight. And he's getting away from the Audi fight as well, isn't he? Now, Metzger is in the first sector of this lap half a second faster than is Martin Rump. So he's going the right way about bringing down the gap as he rides the kerb. And Mitch Gilbert has to go defensive after the place he's gained early on. Now he's coming under attack, is he not? Because right there behind him is Adelie Fong. Again, the absolute out. He's looking better than the WRT car. A team that we may not see a huge amount more of in GT racing now that it's become an Audi customer DTM team for the next season onwards. Vincent Vossi's squad with... Uh, Perhaps new ambitions, new aspirations. Down the hill they come, these two Audis. They're running together. The ODR, OD racing car. Mitch Gilbert, the Malaysian-born Australian at the wheel of it. Right in his tail is Adley Fong. Both of them at single-seater racers. Good battle going on here, look. Aidan Reid just ahead of Alex Imperatore. And Ferrari 8, Daisuke Aito goes ahead and then goes off the road. Gets past Alex Young, runs out of road, gets the place back again coming down the hill. But Alex Young is dropping like a stone here. That car was, what, third after the pit stops when he rejoined. It's down to now 13th place. There's something not right, clearly. So over the timing line goes number eight Ferrari through the traffic. And the leading gap is 10 seconds between Foster and Rump. Alex Jung is being given a one-second stop-and-go penalty for not respecting the mandatory pit stop time. They were short, and so the car gets a stop-go to make up the difference. There is Adelie Fong, number seven, Audi around the outside of Mitch Gilbert, but traffic ahead has to dodge around Max Chen. And they're being caught, I reckon, now, look, by Martin Kodrich, because his last lap was a better one. Yes, Kodrich is coming into the mix because the Audis are delaying themselves. So a one-second stop-go being applied to the number five Bentley, as if life wasn't bad enough with it losing places. Here's the fight going on for fourth and fifth places. Mitch Gilbert versus Adelie Fong as they come down the hill. Now, with that Bentley dropping away, does that affect the championship at all? I don't think it does. Next one to keep an eye to also is Much Yellow, because although Codrich is catching the Audis, he's being caught by Raffaele Much Yellow. We're not done yet in this fascinating race of changing fortunes, changing gaps, changing point situation for the championship. Mitch Gilbert then having one of his better runs of the season here, hanging on to that fourth place. Comes down the hill and up towards the completion now of lap number 23. He'll head over the timing line in a moment. Up past the pits they go. Yeah, Gilbert and Patel have not had a podium all year. Fourth would be the best result, amazingly, for a regular winning team from last year. There's Raffaele Marchiello. He's almost up with Codrich. He's just done a personal best lap. Safety car deployed. The safety car is being deployed yet again. Now, who have we lost? And that's going to bring the gaps right down. It's going to make it even more fascinating, isn't it? Into the pits to serve the stop-and-go penalty has just come Alex Young. But a second safety car period. I'm trying to see for why. Have we lost number 11 up at the turn 15 hairpin? or in that area somewhere. I think we've got a car stationary. Oh, a red flag is being shown. Why is there a red flag being brandished? That shouldn't be happening. Thankfully, the marshal's put it away, but definitely... Oh, there it is. It is number 11, Porsche. I was right. Number 11 by the side of the road, and the officials feel that needs shifting. So a second safety car period is required. Everybody will bunch up here. So it is the Tony Fong, Brian Lee Porsche. It's a bit smoky, as you can see. So that is a retirement, and the safety car with 12 and a half minutes is deployed. Race leader is now only four seconds clear. 
There's a back marker between the top two, but Nick Foster's lead has just been decimated. I still reckon he's got the pace to extend it again and the racecraft to defend if he needs to, but right now he's under attack. Martin Rump is a lot closer, and look who is between them. Treble six, Ryan Hot Renger, the GT4 leader. So Foster, Rump, and then Metzger is the order. 24 and a half seconds did cover them, but those gaps will come down still. Depending on how many cars are between Metzger and Rump, he could be the real man to watch, Manuel Metzger, on the restart here. He's got one, two back markers. You know, that might not really be in his favour after all, but still going to be worth watching. Manuel Metzger, who started off in the Belgian Clio Championship, but has specialised for the Black Falcon team, really, in racing Mercedes around the Nordschleife and in Rockpan GT events in Europe. That did win the 2015 Nürburgring 24 hours for Black Falcon. So 97 Mercedes closing up onto the traffic ahead. A lot of the teams with a lot of work to do overnight here. Lots of damaged cars, lots of drama we've had in this race. So currently on lap number 25 race leaders come down the hill and his 27 Ferrari Nick Foster in the lead the second placed car is third in the Crocodile and it's the Audi of Martin Rump and then the third placed Mercedes has got a further one two three back markers to pick its way by Metzger in turn has got Adley Fong right on his tail so there's still a lot to happen here there is a very disheartened Brian Lee staring at the smoky Porsche in his race run. Now, how many more laps are we going to get in in 10 minutes? They've got to clear the car yet. Hopefully, there's no liquid on the road either. Then all being well, we shouldn't be able to get back up and running. Nine and a half minutes to go, clock ticks on down, even when we do go racing, there are relatively few laps left. There's number 19, Martin Codrich, he's now sixth. Is there anybody ahead that doesn't score points as well, just to throw another curveball in? I think not, he's OK there. So the safety car stays out. And Nick Foster will be quite happy for it to stay this way to the end and take the points for the win, stay into the mix for tomorrow. comes towards the midpoint of lap number 26. At the back of the queue, 12th in the race, Daisuke Aito with his Ferrari, the ARN racing car. In GT4, Reinhold Renga rather benefited, it seems, because he is now comfortably ahead of Kinoshita. There's, of course, GT3 machinery separating them at the moment. Third in GT4 is Alex Al. Fourth is Justin McMillan in the KTM. But they've actually caught up to the BMW, so second, third and fourth are all together. Now, Raffaele Marchiello and Marco Mappelli, both under investigation for an unsafe release. That means that the story might con be continued after the race here. The stewards will have a look at that, I'm sure. Raffaele Marchiello running at the moment in seventh spot and Marco Mapelli in tenth in a car rebuilt after a qualifying accident this morning. Not a huge one, but it did enough to damage an oil cooler, put oil on the road, delay qualifying two. There's 888, there is much yellow. One of those two drivers then under investigation, or the team really under investigation for the unsafe release. So another lap done, 26 are in the book and seven and a half minutes, give or take, still to go. KTM there, Justin McMillan. 
It'll be pretty worn out coming into this because, of course, he's driven it solo. And the safety car has helped him because he lost an extra 10 seconds in the pits for being a solo driver. So it's brought him back into the equation as well on the back of Alex Auer, who is on the back of Kinoshita. And if Kinoshita's BMW were to lose a place, that helps Reinhold Renger in the championship as well going into tomorrow. So right now, he would really like the other Mercedes, run by a different team, but still the same brand, to get past. Safety car in at the end of this lap. We're ready to go racing once more. Safety car in this time then, ready to get round 11 back underway. There goes Manuel Metzger, 97. 19 is Martin Kodric. He's going to be under huge pressure from Marciello. Do not be surprised, with all due deference, if Kodric loses a place rather than gain because he's got Mr Mercedes right there behind him, Raffaele Marciello. Different championship, different teams, but always quick in these cars as the safety car, also a Mercedes, is about to peel back in. Now, what on the restart can Martin Rump do? He doesn't want to lose too much ground stuck behind the GT4 car. He needs Reinhold Renger to go after the leader, keep up the pace. There is Mitch Gilbert out of turn 14. So the Australian driver doing his level best to keep Kodrich at bay, but Marciello is the man storming up into contention here. Lights out atop the safety car. Towards pit in, it will be at the end of lap number 27 here at the Ningbo International Speed Park. Round 11 of Block Pan GT Series Asia for 2018 is about to get back underway. Our second safety car period is done. 27, Ferrari accelerates now down towards the final turn and Nick Foster comes out of turn 22 over the line through he goes and now look Martin Rump is on his toes to get past Reinhold Renger 1.7 seconds back but look behind them what can Metzger do what about Gilbert Kodrich and Marciello and the rest as they all try and die for a position five minutes to go that's going to be what three laps there look you've got Metzger under attack very very wide indeed goes in Palatori but he gets it back on just ahead of Marco Mapelli. Mapelli will go through, well, either KTM gets monstered as well. So Manuel Metzger is ahead of Adelie Fong. Now there is Kodrich on the attack to get past Gilbert. Under attack from Marcello, right round the outside goes Kodrich. Great move. Gilbert loses another place there. He's going to lose another one. Up the inside comes Rafael Di Marcello. So Mitch Gilbert goes wide and Rafael Di Marcello goes through on the inside line. Great stuff. The safety car bunches them all up. And sadly, it's the OD Racing Audi that is now on the back foot, losing place after place. Marco Mapelli is on the inside in the traffic. He's got Tim Slade behind him. There's Aidan Reid in the Porsche. Alexandre Pelatori gets forced out wide and back on again. Just trying to find a clear bit of road, and it's not there. He's on the grass as he gets squeezed by Max Chen, no, by uh, Kinoshita, rather, in the BMW. Kinoshita in 81, losing place after place. So the GT4 battle has also now rather been swamped by all of the GT3 cars flooding past. Back to the points now for GT4 as they come through the chicane. So at the end of the lap, we'll see who has gained and who has dropped back there. Diving through, Marcello goes ahead of Kodrich, takes points away from the Lamborghini. And that's also helping the non-participating 999 Mercedes that we lost on the opening lap of the race. Marcello absolutely charging as he comes downhill here. Turns his way up now through turn 19, heading to the completion of the lap. Nick Foster is away and gone. Martin Rump, 2.3 seconds behind him, and the gap is widening. Third is still Metzger, fourth is Adelie Fong, and then fifth should be Marcello, it is. Sixth is Kodrich, seventh is Mitch Gilbert. In eighth place now is Marco Mapelli. In ninth place it is Tim Slade, and to round out the top ten is Aidan Reid. What about GT4? Look down the order, it is still Renga from Kinoshita, 2.3 seconds between them. More of them go wide, Aidan Reid and also Alexandre Imperatore. Three minutes still to go. Now, where's the next change going to come from? It's here, isn't it? Because there, up the inside line, goes Imperatore, and he goes ahead of Daisuke Aito in the Ferrari. That puts him into 11th place now. So the race leader, currently on lap number 29, Nick Foster, 2.3 seconds to the good, although to the eye, that looks like it's come down. Let's just see, in the first sector it has, what's going on? In the first sector, half a second pulled back by Martin Rump. Has Nick Foster got a problem or did he make a mistake out of view? He comes launching himself over the chicane curbs. We've had an absolute best in the first sector by Raffaele Marciello. The lead gap looks like it's now stabilised, but again looks sideways as Foster as he pushes on. Two and a half minutes on the clock. It should be the last lap this time, it's going to be touch and go. Down the hill they come. 
So pressing on is Nick Foster in the lead. Martin Rubb quicker in sector one, but then he lost ground in sector two. So I think it was a mistake at the start of the lap by Nick Foster that cost him time. Manuel Metzger is still there in third place. Set to give Indigo Racing its best of the championship season. Adley Fong is fourth, but not for long, I suspect, because then you've got 888, Raffaele Marchiello behind. Nick Foster goes across the line. He's got time for two more laps. Nick Foster will have two more laps to go then. Through he goes. There in second place is Martin Rump. The gap is two seconds. Marchiello, fastest lap of the race in 888. There he is in fifth place. Raffaele Marchiello does the fastest lap of the race then. A 142.193 as he closes onto Adley Fong. The order is Foster, Rump, Metzger, Fong, Marchiello, Codrich, Gilbert, Mapelli, Slade, Reed, the top ten. In GT4, it is Renga still ahead of Kinoshita by 1.7 seconds. There they are. There is the Mercedes. Last lap through, Kinoshita was the quicker, and Reinhardt Renga goes way wide, coming out of turn two into turn three. There's the race leader. So last time around, the gap was two seconds. And again, on this part of the lap, it does look as though the Audi is closer. In the first sector, though, no, he's lost a tenth. So the Ferrari still has the advantage. Metzger third, fourth Fong, fifth is Marchiello. He could yet gain another place out of all of this. Martin Codrich running sixth, the car that led early on. And then seventh, eighth, ninth, Mitch Gilbert, Marco Mapelli and Tim Slade in the second of the Hub Auto Corsa Ferraris all running together as well. Out of the hairpin, soon to start his last lap here, comes Nick Foster. Currently, he's on lap number 30. He will get one more lap out of the race, that's all. The clock will hit zero on the next lap. And so, Nick Foster is looking for a second victory. He and John O'Lester go well in China, as I said earlier on. He will come through now then to start the last lap of the race. The clock will hit zero this lap round. Over the timing line, Nick Foster leads. The gap is between him and Martin Rump. 2.7 seconds it's going out Manuel Metzger is third good for the podium but Fong to March Yellow is 0.6 of a second that's the one to watch on the last lap there they go the Audi just ahead of the Mercedes Adelie Fong versus the uncompromising Raffaele March Yellow they all go wide through turn two into turn three and the Audi charges out of the corner fending off the Mercedes but can it do so for another four kilometers the clock has hit zero the flag will be out this time it is going to be a win for the Ferrari. And now we've got number 81, Kinoshita, overtaking during a safety car procedure under investigation. There, look, Marco Mapelli has got Tim Slade right up behind him for eighth and ninth places. Battle of the Italian brands and the Ferrari not quite able to go ahead of the Lamborghini. All that is giving Mitch Gilbert the chance to pull away as they come now once more up towards turn 9 and 10. In the meantime, the Ferrari of Nick Foster is leading the way. Now, look at Marchiello on the back of this little queue. He's on the tail of Adelie Fong, but he can't quite get close enough. Out of the chicane, leaps the leading Ferrari. Nick Foster, along with John O'Lester's good early stint, is on target for win number two of the season. Turns now through turn 15. Checkered flag is at the ready. Great drive, this, and great to see Hub Auto Corsa back at the top of Block Pan GT Series Asia. It was a long time coming, the first win, and now the second one is just two races later. 27 Ferrari, then, is going to be a race winner. Ferrari's and number 27, always a good fit. And so Nick Foster will bring it home. John O'Lester did the opening stint. Round 11 of Block Pan GT Series Asia, won by Nick Foster and John O'Lester for Hub Auto Corsa and for Ferrari. Second is Martin Rump and Frankie Cheng. Third, Indigo Racing's Rolof Brands and Manuel Metzger, best result of the season for them. Fourth, Adley Fong just fending off Raffaele Marchiello. Martin Codridge takes sixth, and this will be a GT4 class win for Reinhold Renger. The car started by Ryuchiru Otsuka, and it's going to be brought home by Renger. So another victory. That's the fifth of the season. And that means it's going to be an 18-point margin between Renger and the Kinoshita Yukosho combination going into the final race tomorrow. So, very much advantage Renga, but he's not sealed the deal just yet. Into the last couple of corners then. And up towards the timing line will come. Treble six, Ryan Hot Renga wins in GT4. Raichiro Otsuka did a very good opening stint, and Ryan Hot Renga, who's come back into racing this season full time, takes the class win. And as it stands, going into tomorrow, the Nick Foster Ferrari, three points, that's all, behind Codrich and Lind. So, said at the start of the race, they were a mathematical possibility. They're more than that now. 
So Nick Foster could yet do it. Patrick Niederhauser is 20 points adrift. He could still do it, but it's going to be a big ask. There's not Reinhold Render, the winner of GT4. Another excellent job done in the Gripper M run car. Mixed day for Gripper M, really. Good in GT4, but big, big drama in GT3. And I suspect the discussions between the drivers would have been continuing in the pit lane during that stint. They continue overnight as well. So the field will head to Park Ferme, and then the drivers to the podium. We've already got Frankie Cheng having arrived back. And uh, those that aren't required for the podium head down towards the teams. Frankie Cheng and Martin Rump's Audi. Martin Rump doing that second stint, bringing it home. So near and yet so far, they have had a win this year. But the Estonian driver, Martin Rump, much underrated driver. Very, very quick, very talented driver is Martin Rump. And if ever there's a wet road, put your money on him. As uh, he proved last year in Zhejiang. So uh, Martin Rump. Getting out of his car. Down the pit road, though, comes the car of the day. The number 27 Ferrari. Nick Foster and John O'Lester. Nick Foster at the wheel of it. To the delight of Habolto Corsa. Great reception for the Ferrari. John O'Lester dives across to open the door. We'll have a word, I'm sure, from our race winners. Manuel Metzger has just arrived next to them in the 97 Mercedes. John O'Lester is absolutely delighted as you can well imagine. So there we have a delighted team. John O'Lester already, of course, his work done. Claire is trying to orchestrate this. To get everybody in the right place. John O'Lester, another Carrera Cup Australia graduate, raced in the uh, Super Taiku Series in Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia and Asian Le Mans Series before coming into Block Pan GT Series Asia this year. And Nick Foster in the Taiwanese owned Humboldt Oak Corsa team. It's Morris Chen's squad. Morris in the number 28 car with Tim Slade. They've got a lot to celebrate. And a great drive by both of them. So let's uh, hear from Nick Foster and John O'Lester. Race winners here in Ningbo. And a victory for the Ferrari team. Second win of the year for John O'Lester and Nick Foster. They're with Claire. Congratulations to Nick Foster and to John O'Lesser. Guys, I hope you got lots of kitchen sinks because it looks like you threw it in all over again. Yeah, I mean, what do I say? Uh, this guy, he's a wizard, man. He started P7, comes out P2. Um, what can I say? I mean, the team's worked super hard uh, between Shanghai and now. I mean, no one's been here before. And to come out and have this kind of pace is seriously unreal. And I mean, credit to this dude, he managed it. And then they just handed me a rocket ship and I could do what I do. So just super stoked. I mean, <laughs> got to be in it, got to be in it. Looks like things really went to uh, your way and favour this weekend so far for race one. Yeah, we've got to stop uh, making it so hard on ourselves, but it seems to be working. So maybe we've found the right, the right formula. But look, after turn one, we, we had a good start anyway, and we sort of stuffed it right in there and, and were amongst it. We were quite lucky to avoid all that. But um, I was screaming on the radio, yo, boys, it's grouse. So um, once we came out in two, it was just management. We weren't going to change tyres, so it was about making sure Nick could get to the end. And the car was a rocket. I mean, it was quicker than qualifying, uh, at least on my part. So, you know, obviously we carry a penalty into tomorrow, but, um, I mean, anything can happen. And uh, with a third-place starting position, it means that we're in a much better position for Sunday than at Shanghai. So bring it on. And I just want to touch on, you know, you guys have been together now for the last two rounds, uh, three rounds. So perfect partnership, it seems to be there. Yeah, I mean, Fuji was a bit tough uh, intro for him. I mean, the car wasn't great. We still managed to get a podium, which is no credit to him jumping in the car for the first time on the race weekend. And then since then, two wins. Um, and, you know, he's had front row starts. OK, maybe that was possible today, but Coley wasn't so good. But, I mean, the way he's racing, the way he's driving, how can I, how can I fault that? That's unreal. Just hands it to me in the lead and I can do the job. So, No worries, man. <laughs> well, congratulations, guys. 
Great to hear from a delighted Nick Foster that brings him very much into the mix in the championship. But a fair point made by John O'Lester. They now carry that penalty of 15 seconds for being race winners into tomorrow's race. So does that mean it's advantage Lamborghini once again? It's going to be absolutely intriguing, isn't it, tomorrow? Race will be at 10.55 local time. Half past four local time right now, incidentally, as the winning drivers, winning teams will be marshalled up towards the podium in a moment or two. Uh, great result for Indigo Racing as well. The Korean team of Manuel Metzger and Rudolf Bryans taking that third spot behind Frankie Cheng and Martin Rump and the win, as you've been hearing, John O'Lester and Nick Foster. Presentations to come. And we've got the uh, podium, of course, for overall for Pro-Am and Am and then also the GT4 podium. Let's have a look back at the highlights. It was all happening around turns one and two and three, and then we had that long safety car period. Now, have a look at 23 Nissan. Did it touch number 999? It got a whack from 97, and then as they came into the corner, up the inside went the Nissan. It was certainly on the wrong line, and there was damage as it came out the other side. So that was potentially where the incident started. Off the road, pole man Nico Bastian in the gravel. Badly delayed, Rulof Browns, but it was an amazing recovery, as then tagged into a spin. Eduardo Liberati, he got collected by the Sandy Stubik Porsche and it was the number 37 Anthony Lou Audi that got embroiled with the Nissan and triggered all the mayhem. So safety car period required. It was a long safety car period as well. And there were some very frustrated drivers down in the pit lane trying to explain exactly who did what to which and to whom. Safety car lights out, race underway. Dennis Lynn led John O'Lester, who had really lucked in with all the drama at the start. He was up in the second place. Uh, hustling on was Andre Couto in the Phoenix Run Bentley. So too was the recovering Rulof Browns. Alexander Matchell went wide and gave him a place as the pit window opened and everyone came streaming down the pit lane. Frankie Chang gave way to Martin Rump. That car in second place, that's where it would finish. As up front, John O'Lester handed over to Nick Foster. Great battles on track, largely between number 63 and Marco Mapelli and 28 Ferrari of Tim Slade. Dennis Lynn pitted out of the lead as late as he dared. He was delayed on his way in by the Ken Urata Max Chen BMW. And when he blasted out, Martin Kodrich was running third. Lost places on his outlap, but then Alex Jung fell down the order as well after the pit stop for number five, Bentley. And that car also had to serve a one second stop go penalty, which in the end put it down to 13. He was in danger of being roughed up a little bit as well, Alex Jung, by Aidan Reid. Thankfully, contact avoided, but the Bentley clearly didn't work in the second stint because even before the penalty, it was losing plenty of places, much to the frustration of the team. Mitch Gilbert had got a decent position after the pit window, but then that car too started to lose places. He ran wide coming out of the last corner and up past him went Manuel Metzger. The next driver to come up to attack was Adelie Fong. We lost, though, number 11 of Brian Lee, and that brought out the safety car for a second time. We had a handful of racing laps at the very end, through which Nick Foster was able to control the lead, but Mitch Gilbert lost another place to Raphael Marchiello, the triple eight Mercedes accelerating its way through the field, and Marchiello then did a move on Kodrich, pushing him back into sixth position and teeing up a real championship fight tomorrow. Nick Foster and John O'Lester scoring victory then in round 11 of Block Pan GT Series Asia. A great drive by the Ferrari crew. It's win number two of the season. They won by two and a half seconds with Martin Rump and Frankie Cheng. Second, Manuel Metzger and Roloff Browns in third. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podium ceremony of Race 1 Blancpain GT Series Asia at Ningbo International Speed Park. We will start this ceremony with the overall winners. We welcome with applause in third position in car 97, Manuel Metzger and Roaf Bruins. In second position, car number three, Frankie Chen, Kung Fu and Martin Rump. And in first position, car number 27, John O'Lester and Nick Foster. So, great result for Harboto Corsa and for the Antipodeans, the New Zealander John O'Lester, the Australian Nick Foster. It is the top step of the podium here at Ningbo International Speed Park. And so now to present the uh, trophies. There is Mr. Jian Tong Chun, the Office Director of Automobile and Motorcycling Sports Administrative Centre for the General Administration of Sport of China. 
trophies go to Martin Rump and then to the Chinese driver, Frankie Cheng. And at the other end of the podium for third place, great debut in the championship for Manuel Metzger. And he'll be delighted to be on the podium, Roloff Reins. So with the trophies presented, Benjamin Franasevici, the series director for SRO, steps forward to hand over the checks to the season-long entrance, two and a half thousand dollars to third, five thousand to second, and then for the uh, winners, ten thousand dollars to Hub Auto Courses, John O'Lester and Nick Foster. So it goes to show what safety cars and what the pit stop penalties can do and how fortunes can change so readily. Drivers now look forward for the photographs and the champagne is at their feet. Round 11 of Blockpan GT Series Asia won by Nick Foster and John O'Lester. Martin Rump equally happy with his second place, gave it his all, but the Audi just not quite as quick today. But he and Frankie Chang taking another podium and a great result for Manuel Metzger, who can't get the cork out of the bottle, and Roloff Browns. Manuel Metzger, it says in the regulations, drivers must spray the champagne. Well, that's fine as long as the cork will come out of the bottle. So Manuel Metzger, Mercedes AMG factory driver, takes his trophy, but doesn't get the chance to spray the champagne. So the Ningbo International Speed Park already busy because out on track cars for the next qualifying session uh, that rounds out the day here. But we've got more podium ceremonies still to come. And it'll be the Pro-Am and the AMs that we will cross to next. The AM winners, Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter. Good day for Australia. Another victory for Australians there. The uh, Andrew McPherson, Ben Porter, Lamborghini winning the AM competition. Now we have the GT3 Pro-Am and AM class ceremony. We welcome with applause. First in the AM class in car 51, Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter. In third position for the Pro-Am in car number 63, Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Marco Mapelli. In second position in car 888, Alexander Machol and Raphael Machello. And in first position for Pro-Am in car number 7, Andrew Kim and Adelie Fong. So there, the Pro-Am winners, Andrew Kim and Adley Fong, head to the top step of the podium. Alexander Matschel and Raffaele Marciello for the Gripper M team. And in the Pertamina overalls, Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Marco Mapelli taking third in Pro-Am. They're the Am winners, though. Ben Porter and Andrew McPherson receiving their trophies from Diana Hu, Blockpan event manager. She hands over the trophies to the AMs and then to the Pro-AMs, Blockpad energetic supporters of SRO's GT racing in Europe as well as in Asia. And it's been a great fit, Blockpan and uh, GT racing. And there for the category winners, Adderley Fong and Andrew Kim, the trophies presented. And two very happy drivers indeed. Andrew Kim from Korea, Adley Fong from Hong Kong, and the photographs will be taken. Trophies there, and also the lower graded driver within Pro Am receives the Blanc Pan clock. So Andrew Kim gets the very, very nice timepiece. And the drivers then, once the photographs are done, will be able to celebrate because at their feet is the champagne. Pro-Am winners, Andrew Kim and Adelie Fong here in Ningbo. Not everybody wants to spray the champagne, but I think they get there in the end. Raffaele Marciello does join in. Gets a soaking from Andrew McPherson. And so the Pro-Am and Am winners enjoy the podium celebrations at the end of the penultimate round of Blancpain GT Series Asia and tomorrow's race 
in isolation, never mind what it will do for the championship. Set to be just fantastic. So the drivers in a moment or two for GT4 will step forward. And that's been another excellent GT4 battle in this ongoing story between Ron Holt Renga and the applause. BMW Team Studi there, squad of Takayuki Kinoshita and Sanako Yukashu. But for third Alex place, Ao. Alex Ao and Ringo Chong onto the podium. In second position, car number 81, Takayuki Kinoshita and Sanako Yukashu. And in first position, car triple six, Reinhold Renger and Ryochiro Otsuka. So, Mr. Sun Xiaodong, the vice president of the My Time Group, steps forward to hand over the trophies. With uh, their Ron Holt Renger in the Gripper M overalls. A very, very happy category victor once again. Fifth win of the season. Their co driver, Richu Otsuka, gets his winner's trophy. And Benjamin Franasovici steps forward now in order to hand over the money. $1,500 for Ringo Chong and Alex out. Takeyuki Kinoshita and Sanako Yokoshu. Uh, two and a half thousand dollars and three and a half thousand to Ryan Hot Ranga and Raichiro Otsuka for Gripper M. They're eager to get on with the champagne, but there are still photographs to be taken. And again, here is another fight that will go down to tomorrow. It's still very much advantage Ryan Hot Ranga, but if he doesn't finish and the BMW squad were to win, it would be a completely different story. Ringo Chong is all smiles, third on the podium as now the champagne can be sprayed. A win here at Ningbo for Reinhold Renga and Raichiro Otsuka. The celebrations underway at the end of the GT4 podium and another intriguing battle between Mercedes and BMW. GT4 has come a long way in the last two seasons, more evidence of just what a competitive class it now is. So Ryan Holt Renger, celebration's done. And uh, let's see whether we can grab a word with the man leading the championship heading into tomorrow's race. Ryan Holt Renger taking another victory. And an excellent job well done by the German driver who's only really returned to racing in the last 18 months after many seasons away, but back and back in style. If you're wondering what those are, those are cars in the Geely Cup, which is a one-make four-door saloon car series. Uh, and uh, they're actually not a bad-looking saloon car, but they're out for their practice session. Right, let's hear from Reinhold Ranger. He's with Claire. OK, we're here for the winners of the GT4. Congratulations, guys. Tell us a little bit what happened down at your race. Um, yeah, thank you very much. It was a very interesting race with all of the safety cars and, and the stuff. So. Uh, with this 15 seconds gap the BMW had, I guess we are, I, I thought we are comfortable, but then with the safety car, it was already tight at the end again, and so we had to push really until the last lap. But now finally we won, and um, that's not bad for the championship again, so uh, we are back in the game. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I took tomorrow, I have my, and, uh, today and uh, tomorrow I uh, help Leonardo. So now you've had a dominant lead now going into tomorrow's race. Tell us a bit, little bit about your thoughts for your pace tomorrow. Yeah, it's a, it's a race like today. Of course, we have to bring the car home. That's definitely clear. And we have still to push. The other competitors are still strong and are not sleeping. So we have to push, have to drive our race, of course. Hopefully, uh, everything is fine with, uh, with the traffic and so on tomorrow. It's a really tight course. And uh, yeah, when, when we have a little bit of luck, then uh, we have a really good chance. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Two very happy drivers in GT4. 
And on this tight and twisty Ningbo International Speed Park, the Blancpain GT Series Asia Round 11 then concluded. And we will look forward to the championship showdown tomorrow. Round 11, certainly with plenty of drama and many a highlight to look back on. All began, of course, with that run to the first corner. And again, look, the Mercedes ahead of the Lamborghini. But then it just seemed to be a slow start, hesitant start by Nico Bastian. So out one side came Eduardo Liberati. But that put him into the path of Roloff Brown. So the two cars touched. And then the Nissan seemed to get into the Mercedes at turn one. Off the road, Nico Bastian. That was it from another angle. Roloff Brown's in the Indigo Mercedes. Badly delayed as well. Nico Bastian tried to dig himself out of the gravel. But then got beached. And this was at turn three. Liberati then hit. First of all, by number 37, Audi, in the hands of Anthony Liu, and then by the Porsche. That was Bastian trying to get going. He eventually dug himself into the gravel and out of the race, Eduardo Liberati. The Porsche that we lost as well was Sandy Stuvik's car. So with all that damage and debris, out came the safety car. It was quite a long safety car period. Dennis Lind had led, but a great jump up the order had put John Lester in second place. When we went racing once more, battle was on lower down. Andre Kuto up past the... Hiraki Nagai Ferrari. Alexander Matchell was coming under attack from Roloff. Browns was coming under attack also from uh, Yuki Taniguchi's Nissan. Matchell pitted early, as also did the Frankie Chang Audi to give way to Martin Rudd. 27 Ferrari was looking good though. Now Nick Foster would take the car over and benefit from the longer pit stop of the race leader, who Dennis Lind was also delayed coming into the pits behind the BMW. So it was a slow pit in, plus 15 seconds. It meant Ferrari number 27 of Nick Foster was clear going into the final few laps, being chased by Martin Rudd. Alex Young jumped Codrich as Martin Codrich came out of the pit lane, and Codrich would lose more places, but then so too would Alex Young. He would tumble down the field, and Mitch Gilbert, also in the red and blue OD racing Audi, would drop back as the stint wore on. In contrast, Aidan Reid in 991 was on his toes. He was 10th come the end of the race. Tim Slade ultimately just jumping ahead of him. He made his move against Alex Young, went through on the inside. Behind the pair, though, was a hard-charging Raffaele Marchiello. He would be fifth by the end of the race. Leaders had to work their way through the traffic, diving down towards the last turn. Mitch Gilbert put off line, drifted out wide, and that lost him a place to 97 in the hands of Manuel Metzger. Second safety car period as Brian Lee had to park his Porsche Cayman. That car stranded trackside, was going no further. When the race got back underway, it was a very frantic last couple of laps with that markers getting in the way, with battles to be resolved. Tim Slade on his toes gaining ground and Raffaele Marchiello charging up on the inside to go ahead of Martin Codrich and steal fifth position. Nick Foster, though, was on target for the race win. He and John O'Lester taking win number two of the championship season. Checkered flag would fly to the Hub Auto Corsa Ferrari that came through victorious. Great job done by Nick Foster and he and John O'Lester very pleased indeed and crucially for Nick Foster it brings him now to within three points of the championship leaders going into tomorrow's last race of Blancpain GT Series Asia for 2018 and there's the GT4 competition to resolve tomorrow and there's Pro-Am as well so lots of championships still as it should be to go down to the wire in the last round of the series lots to keep us entertained tomorrow that is for certain Nick Foster and John O'Lester, the winners of round 11 of Blancpain GT Series Asia, in the end by two and a half seconds. But with a 15-second penalty for being the race winners in the pits tomorrow, how is that going to affect their race and how will that perhaps give the advantage back to the Lamborghini squad of Martin Codrich and Dennis Lind? In GT4, Reinhold Renger with yet another victory there. His uh, fifth success of the season. Doesn't matter whether he drives with different co-drivers because he's had now three different co-drivers over the season or drives on his own he's still able to win races and Reinhold Renger is looking good to give Grupa M at least one championship they were the GT3 winners last year Hunter Abbott the champion this year they could well sew up GT4 but what about GT3 looking unlikely but it is still possible because going into tomorrow's race the number 999 car still has a chance remote but a chance Nick Foster and John O'Lester the winners today two and a half seconds up on Martin Rump and Frankie Chang Third game the way of Manuel Metzger and Roloff Browns in the Indigo Racing Mercedes. So, tomorrow's championship decider promises to be another great race in Blancpain GT Series Asia. We'll see you tomorrow. For now, from David Anderson and Claire Jedrek, goodbye.